Well, if you're a regular viewer of this show, you've noticed there's been something missing for the past couple of months. Probably our favorite guest, columnist Mark Stein, has not been on this program. We practically had to send Liam Neeson out to track him down and return him. But Mark Stein is back with us tonight, and we're grateful for it. Welcome back, Mark. Hey, great to, great to be back with you, Tucker. Yeah, Liam Neeson rescued me from uh, a bunch of Albanians who'd been, uh, who'd been holding me. It's, it's uh, Taken 12 coming to the multiplex near you anytime soon. <laughs> Good. I'll be, I'll be first in line. What do you make of this? I, I, it, the Democratic Socialists of America seem like they've been taken over by a bunch of Trustafarians from Brooklyn. Is that, do you think what's happened? Yeah, I think it's actually sometimes you see mass movements that actually dwindle into niche markets. Um, it happens a lot. Uh, Broadway, for example, used to be the mainstream of American popular culture and then became a little boutique thing. Same thing happened with jazz. And these guys have gone the same way. And in fact, they're using the same choreography, those jazz hands. Uh, I don't understand why clapping. You've been talking about real problems with men in America. We're now watching a political convention where clapping is so triggering, uh, everybody in says had to make jazz hands like a lot of camp assistant choreographers uh, rehearsing some number from Hello Dolly. I don't like the jazz. I find jazz hands triggering because it reminds me of old time mammy singers. So it's like being at a convention of uh, the Virginia Democrat governor and lieutenant governor and all the rest of them all doing all doing their uh, mammy songs. Uh, this this is the degeneration. Socialism slaughtered millions. These Trustafarians couldn't slaughter anybody. They're not serious socialists. <laughs> We've really missed you. And yet, as Angela Nagel said, and I think it's a fair point, and that's why this is worth taking a look at, they do have an effect on the mainstream of the Democratic Party. I mean, they're using language that, unfortunately, Elizabeth Warren uses, or Batoa Rourke, or that Booker kid from New Jersey is running for president. I mean, they, they seem to be cribbing their notes from the DSA. Yeah, I think that's what Angela got wrong. I mean, no one's interested in, uh, you know, the controlling heights of the economy. This nonsense is actually yeah. what they're about. And if you listen to the Democrat debate, which I watched from thousands of miles away, so it seemed even weirder. Cory Booker at one point said, we don't talk enough about trans Americans. And in particular, we don't talk enough about African American Trans, I want to make sure I get this right. African American, trans Americans. And of course, the answer to that is that on these terms, you can never talk enough about African American, trans Americans. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, obsession with boutique demographics, which they take as seriously. It's basically like Downton Abbey for progressives. It's does the second son of the Viscount uh, get to sit next to the younger daughter of the Marquis? That is actually this, this, oh, well, I am a white woman of privilege, so I have to sit down at the far end of the table because an African-American, trans-American, non-binary person gets to sit at the head of the table. They take it all seriously. The presidential candidates take it seriously. It's an alternative reality that they've successfully created. And it's boring as hell. If only they would mm. spend four minutes telling us what they think of the Federal Reserve Bank, I'd be kind of excited. Mark Spine, they, Stein, I am They've never heard back. of the I'm Federal sure. Reserve. They Great to be back with you, Tucker. What does that have to do with trans-Americans? So mm. good. Mm. Thank you. Good to see you.